Episode of Chord Play, and that's the chords of Skid Row. And Skid Row formed in New Jersey in 1986 and got their record deal thanks in part to a friendship between Dave Sabo and John Bon Jovi, or Dave the Snake Sabo and John Bon Jovi. Dave was actually a member of Bon Jovi before Richie Sambora, which is early, you know, in Bon Jovi's career. But I guess they made a pact, and whichever one was going to be, you know, getting a record deal first was going to help the other one get a record deal, and that's exactly what happened. So we're going to be talking about the American version of Skid Row, you know, from the 80s and the early 90s, not the Gary Moore version that was a full decade before the American version. And I did do a little bit of research for this episode. I didn't realize the American Skid Row paid Gary Moore $35,000 to use the band name Skid Row. I didn't realize that. And I've seen Skid Row in concert twice. I saw them back in the day and they opened for Bon Jovi, ironically enough, and they were great. You know, Sebastian Bach was a very intense front man. He said the F word like a thousand times. I mean, I was a teenager at that concert, but I was shocked. Like, you know, F-bombs were being dropped all over the place. And I saw him again open for Kiss. It was Kiss, Ted Nugent, and Skid Row. And I guess Johnny Sullinger, uh, the vocalist after Sebastian Bach, you know, he passed away a few years ago, but he was the vocalist of that show. But they were great in concert, you know, full of energy and this really intense, you know, hard rock sound. Skid Row rocks. Or with the opening, that's Monkey Business from Slave to the Grind, something like this. kind of finger plucked uh, you know riff like this and you could play that with your pick um, but I'm using my fingers it sounds like it might be finger picked or maybe hybrid picked I usually just finger pick it like that and we're dealing with these partial chords and it's kind of loosely based around F sharp 7 you know loosely but we're doing you know, kind of fourths, and you're kind of hammering on to that major third there, you know, that A sharp. So you're kind of implying a chord progression, even though you're not really playing the chord progression. You're just kind of flirting with chords and uh, flirting with the B and that E, you know, down there at the bottom. rolled almost all the way off. That last time just grab an E power chord right there and then swell your volume all the way open like this. You know, really slow and then it kicks in. So it's kind of a you know a imitation or kind of a variation of the opening because you're doing an A. It's all partial chords right there, but you're walking up. It's almost like an implied, you know, F sharp blues because you're grabbing that flat five right there, like this. <laughs> Second time, do a little trill right there between F, uh, E, and F sharp, and then do it again. Now, last time, do a squeal on this A note there on the G string, and then come down, you know, F sharp blues. <laughs> a B to an E, that would be something like this. Okay, up next we're 
next is Rattlesnake Shake from the first album, and I'll say this about Skid Row, they definitely helped me refine, you know, pinch harmonics, because there are pinch harmonics all over that first album. And around that time period, you know, Zach Wilde had already hit the scene with Ozzy, and Zach was, you know, squealing like a pig as soon as he came out. And then you had Dimebag that hit the scene with Pantera, you know, around the same time that Skid Row did, even though Pantera technically had been together for years, but they hit the scene with that first album, Cowboys From Hell. But during this period, it seemed like everybody was doing pinch harmonics and squealing, just like Rattlesnake Shake here. <laughs> Uh, you know, single notes in open position based around E, but it's the way he's aggressively squealing some of those notes, like this. So definitely Skid Row had a lot of aggression, you know, a lot of attitude. So right there, it's just kind of E, and you're playing with, you know, E5, E7 and E6 right there. And he's also doing like a pinch harmonic and a slight bend at the same time, kind of smearing the harmonic, which sounds really cool. simple riff, but it sounds really wicked with those kind of squealing, you know, partial bends and stuff in there. And as far as the location on the string, you want to basically squeal and, you know, do a pinch harmonic right before your bridge pickup right there. It's not quite in the middle like where a middle pickup would be. It's really close to the bridge pickup area right there, like right before the bridge pickup, like this. <laughs> walking down like this partial C, partial E minor, and then grabs that G note. And surprisingly there isn't a squeal on the G, it's just a regular note. Next is Youth Gone Wild from their first album. It was one of their first big hits. Something like this. So you're literally just banging on this B flat power chord in the beginning like this. Giant G5 right there. And then it's almost like a slide guitar riff, but it's. Right? So you're kind of sliding up into that C, grabbing that B flat, and then back to the open strings for that implied G. And it's a partial F to partial B flat. And then the open strings there in the middle. So really slow there. time right there you want to grab this E flat 5 and mimic that same thing. Um. from 18 in life and we looked at the intro I think it was one of the headbangers ball episodes of chord play I put together but the outro of this song is like this <laughs> fan 
of chord progressions like this where part of the chord you know remains stationary and then the root notes change which changes the function of those chords so we're starting with this and that's going to be a c sharp minor nine you know c sharp that b note there on the g d sharp on the b string and the high e open you grab the root and then pick you know this descending pattern now change that c sharp root to a sus 2 sharp 11 and we're just changing the root note now play the low e open and it's going to change to e major 7 and then right there you're going to change the root to a b and then you want to ascend and that's going to be an a at 11 so right there feature this type of movement, you know, where the chord remains, but then the root notes change like that. Midnight from the first album, something like this. starts with this E power chord and then it's partial chords up on the top like this. So that's basically two E5s then the low E open and then you're basically playing this part of an E minor 7 right there to start. You know that D note and that G note. And it's like a partial D and then partial C like that. vibrato on that partial D too. And the second time you've got this little uh, kind of single note riff with a power chord right there. E, F sharp, G, and A5 and then walk back down to that open E. example is Quicksand Jesus from the Slave to the Grind album, and I'm not really sure where this altered tuning came from, but we are in an altered tuning here. Uh, they basically tune the A string up to C, which is very unusual. We've got E, C, D, G, B, E, so everything else is the same, but the altered tuning, you know, it's kind of weird. I'm not sure where that came from, but something like this. spooky I love these chords but we've got this to start that's basically an E minor add uh, E minor add nine and we've seen a lot of add nine and minor add nine chords on this channel but there's E minor add nine and you're gonna move down to this and that's just an E minor nine so we have this seventh fret there on the D and the uh, B string and that's going to change that to an E minor at 11 and then right there it's going to end with this just that F sharp on the D string and that's back to E minor at 9 again but a different you know voicing than we started with it's just this one so you've got this four chord progression you know E minor at 9 exact same chord progression you know with your fret hand but now you're going to play that that C note which is your open A string and that changes the function 
function of all those chords. Now we're starting with this. So that's a C major 7 sharp 11 now. Instead of that E minor add 9 we had. And just that different root note changes things. So you're going to go from that down to this. And then now that's going to be a C add 9 sharp 11. Then you're moving up to this. And that's a, a C6 add sharp 11. Right there, that's C major 7 sharp 11. So we've switched these minor, you know, uh, moody chords we had in E to these brighter, you know, sharp 11 chords in C just by changing that root note, which is really cool, like this. episode of chord play with the chords of skid row and skid row is definitely a very interesting band i've always dug the guitar work you know very aggressive and this moody and dark kind of sound you know very heavy you know pinch harmonics and power chords and all this stuff and then you know there's just something about their music you know i definitely remember being a teenager and was really impressed and you know able to do pinch harmonics and i could actually play you know some of their songs and even though there were certain players like vi or you know malmstein or some, or some players like that i couldn't really play like them but I could totally play a Skid Row song and do the squeals and do, you know, the riffs and stuff. And I remember it was that kind of, you know, progress where I thought, hey, you know, I can actually play this stuff. And then I kept looking over at Malmsteen and Vi and some of those players thinking, you know, I'll get to you guys sooner or later. But I remember, you know, definitely cutting my teeth with Skid Row and a lot of their riffs and songs. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to Night Lessons and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.